Greetings, my friends. We are all interested in the television, for that is where you and I are going to spend much of the rest of our lives in front of. And remember, my friends, future television programs such as this will affect you in the future. For the first time, we are bringing you all the bunkum, based only on the secret testimony of the pathetic souls who concocted this preposterous ordeal. Can your heart stand the shocking facts behind gullible Americans hoaxed by scam artists? In the late 1990s, a mysterious video gripped the imagination of the American public. Supposedly, the found footage taken by this group that had vanished off the face of the earth. The video, when examined, appeared to show the disappearance and possible demise of this group by otherworldly forces. And it wasn't the Blair Witch Project. Actually, dating from a year earlier, the video in question was Alien Abduction Incident in Lake County broadcast on UPN. This is a UPN. After the broadcast, UPN invited people to come to their website and voice their opinions. It's Let us know what you think at UPN.com. The American public, being what they are, overwhelmingly voted. <laughs> and so it got shown again with some additional specially enhanced footage designed to justify the second airing. So what is this video? Ladies and gentlemen, by way of introduction, this is a film about trickery and fraud, about lies. I'm not comfortable with the statement confirming or denying the possibility that the McPhersons were abducted by extraterrestrials. I'd personally be quite comfortable denying the possibility, but what the hell? My deputy found the tape at the McPherson place, and the McPhersons haven't been heard from since. Okay, I got it working now. Yeah, right, you've been saying that for the last half hour. Oh, red lights on this time. So please note this for the record. This guy has supposedly just spent half an hour trying to figure out how to turn a video camera on. Compare this to the way he uses the video camera throughout the rest of this presentation, where he somehow manages to keep everything in frame and mostly in focus the entire time, even when his neck is on fire from an alien probe, or there's aliens screaming and shooting at him with laser rays and crap like that. This is not the work of somebody who's just picked up a camera for the first time this day. No? Uh, great. Power's out. Spooky. Let's check it out. What's going on outside? Oh man, what the hell is somebody dang on put dry ice in my fuse box? Whoa. What the hell was that? You see that? What was that? Lightning. Fire. Power of God or something. But then further investigation reveals a UFO sitting in the lawn, which is for some reason photographed from a down-looking angle, almost as if it was a small model sitting on the ground being photographed from someone in a standing position, like maybe this. Joe Bob, Cletus, I think, I think I said, look, look over there. It's like, oh shit, Wookiees live in those things. Wookiees rip people's arms out of their sockets when they lose shit, I heard that. How is that done? The same way they did it. There's a jump cut here. If you go frame by frame, you can see the edit in the middle of this whip pan where they go off the yard and onto the model. It's an old trick. Just be quiet, you guys. Don't say a word. They're at the cow. They're at the cow. What? What? What, what are they doing, Brian? They're cutting open one of the cows. Oh. Cow? He's just cutting it. Quiet. Where's the cow? And why is it so foggy? Oh, right. So the laser pointer beam will show up. Though, conversely, the cow will not. Why cows, anyway? What is it aliens have against cows? I mean, their entire history shows that they just seem to hate the little buggers. Or they're hungry. Who knows? We need to get the hell out of here. What's going on? There's f***ing aliens out there! Where are you going? I'm coming with you. No, you're not. Well, I just don't think you should go out there by yourself. Now, for a guy who's never even operated a camera before, supposedly, 
He seems to be pretty well equipped since he obviously has a camera mounted light on top of this unit since even when he goes outside everything in front of him is always perfectly well lit and clear. Battery's dead. When's the last time what? you drove this in here? Here. I don't know. I mean, maybe a cable's this or something. Great. The hell was that? The hell. Shine your light over here a minute. Oh my god. Now one should hope that this didn't require an explanation. But let's face it, that static is not what tape static looks like. The tape is perfectly fine. The image sits perfectly still. Someone stuck static on top of it. Why would they do that? Well, one, they probably want it to look like, ooh, spooky alien technology has degraded the tape in random places. But there's probably a more practical reason for it. Take this example here. Something's wrong with the car engine. Let's go pop up the engine hood and see what's going on. Hey, wait, the static. Oh, suddenly there's smoke coming out. Why did the static come in there? Probably because the first time they tried to set off the smoke bomb, it didn't work. They had to hide the edit somehow. Hence the static. In fact, you'll notice throughout the entire video, the static keeps coming in every time there's a special effect. But of course, it is very convenient that it happens whenever these beings are in proximity to the camera. We can never get a decent look at them. But maybe that's what's causing it. Yeah. Maybe I'm a Chinese jet pilot. Now the action is ratcheting up. An alien's gotten into an upstairs bedroom, and it's up to Dad to confront him with a shotgun. At least this film had the sense to realize that aliens attacking a bunch of people sitting out on a farm somewhere in the Midwest would have to deal with people with shotguns. Unlike that goddamn M. Night Shyamalan movie with Mel Gibson, where no one had a firearm in the entire place and they had to beat the alien off of the bat. We don't quite stoop to that level of stupidity. However, after this exciting confrontation with the door, nothing happens. Because they decided to keep that part for later as part of this special bonus feature. It's very much like a haunting story with a modern spin. There's that scary thing in the upstairs room you dare not go into. Let's face it, our culture loves aliens. They're everywhere. They're the new mythology. We not only know exactly what aliens like to drive around in, we even know exactly what the aliens themselves look like. From the high budget to the no budget, aliens seem to have taken on a very specific shape, which is one that is remarkably similar to our own, even though none of us has ever actually seen one. No, really, none of us. Take my word for it on that. I mean, why would aliens even be coming here? Well, why would we go to another planet, for example? What's so important that we would actually undertake that kind of a mission? And furthermore, just how difficult would that be? Let's check some things. Space is big, really big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the street to the Ooh. chemist. Good points. Space is not exactly the easiest thing to get around. I mean, science fiction has this condition to think that it'd be just like taking an airplane around the Earth and visiting different countries, but the reality is a little different than that. Let's say you've got some crazy shrinking device, and you shrink the whole universe down so small that the Earth is now the size of a marble. The nearest star to the Earth at that scale would still be 20 miles away. Your spaceship, which would be the size of a quark or less, would still have a hell of a hard time getting around. Why did we just go into light speed? <laughs> Yes, in fact, even at the speed of light, it would still take four and a quarter years to get to the nearest star. Can you imagine the awkwardness of that debriefing once our astronauts had gotten home and had to explain what they had done with the trillions of dollars sunk into their mission? You did what? Probed him, sir. In the rectum, with a socket wrench, sir. You probed the leader of a sovereign planet with- Oh no, no, not the leader. No, 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 just some nobody. Actually, lots of nobodies. Little fringe guys, no one's ever gonna believe, not credible witnesses at all. Your mission was to establish peaceful diplomatic relations with the first planet with alien life we've ever discovered. And you did. What, what did you learn from all this probing? And we learned they don't like being probed. Ooh, not at all. Oh god, how they must hate us now. Sometimes it took all three of us just to hold them down. 
Do you know, this mission cost 700 trillion dollars! And it was worth every penny. Uh, good days. We also brought back a primo supply of these Arcturian beer melons. Aim! And now the aliens unleash their most dastardly scheme yet. A lens flare that flies terrifyingly around the room and is so obviously added later, Dad doesn't even turn his head to watch it go by. And the cameraman continues to yell out, I see it, even when it's not on camera. Who can possibly explain how this happened? Experts know more than we do. Look, it's been 50 years since the Roswell crash, and there's never been a single piece of usable news footage. Experts are the new oracles. I don't speak publicly on this subject anymore. They speak to us with the absolute authority of the computer. This is a very, very difficult and taboo subject still. And we bow down before them. They're God's own gift to the faker. Oh, but this is totally cheating, you say? This is not fair. This is yellow journalism. You're just cutting in completely irrelevant footage from other sources in order to support your preconceived bias that the tape is fake. And you'd be right to say that. The problem is, the people that made and aired this special did the exact same thing. For money. We, we really live in an alien-haunted world. This is Michael Shermer. This guy kicks ass. He's the president of the Skeptic Society and the author of a lot of cool books, at least two of which I've read. If somebody said, we have a tape of a family abducted, I'd say, well, let me see it. Whoa, 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 wait. Hold the phone. Run that back. What was the grammar of that statement? If somebody said, we have a tape of a family abducted, I'd say, well, let me see it. I would say, let me see it. In other words, he's Our never viewed this a, tape. Call it culture of science fiction. He's talking so hypothetically. Images, uh, this interview uh, has nothing like to do with someone evaluating like. this video. And what about this guy? This is so Stanton Friedman. Is he's a real guy, too. He's considerably less awesome than Michael Schirmer. But I get the feeling the guy is honest. He's not trying to deceive anyone. He legitimately thinks this stuff is happening. On the other hand, who the hell is this duck fucker? The tape is real. Knock it off, you Electra phony! This is not something that you can fig on a home video camera with backyard special effects. Oh, really? So in other words, since this is an amateur production, if something were to happen to come to- HOLY SHIT A REAL I'M THING! WHAT THE FUCK? FUCK IS GOING OVER HELL! YOU FUCK SAKE! OH MY GOD! IT'S OVER THERE! OH! OH LOOK! THE DOG! Ah, MARY! MARY! ARE YOU OKAY? MARY! MARY! Answer me! I mean, these days you can do anything with digital effects if you have enough time and money. That's the part people forget. And you can't do it on standard stock 8mm tape like this is. Failure! No, you can't do fancy special effects with videotape, but you can sure as hell record any special effects onto videotape. Remember these things? They weren't even old at the time this was made. I mean, VHS is even more primitive than 8mm, so this is obviously a real record of an alien war, according to this moron. But what does he know? Not only is he talking out of his ass, he's not even a real FX editor at all. Failure! Fraud! The fake... Faker. I wonder how hard it would be to consult some actual experts on this case. I mean, it's not as if the internet didn't exist back then. Ooh, what is this? It's the Sheriff's Department. And what do you know about that? They have a phone number. Lake County Sheriff's Department. Yes, I was um curious to know if, um, is there any way you could look up and determine if there's any outstanding missing persons case in that county regarding a McPherson family. This would be dating from like the late 90s, 97, 98, somewhere thereabouts. Is this about that TV program? Yeah, actually it is. Uh, you've heard about this. I hear about it about every two months, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? Yeah, and let me tell you, just like I've told everybody else who's called, we have no such case. There has never been such a case in Lake County. Well, wasn't that enlightening? Brian, let's go now. Come on. You be careful, okay? Okay, guys. Take care of me. Okay. Turn it back. 
We will. Okay. You take care of the mom and the girls, Tommy. Yeah, I will. All right. Okay. We'll be right back. Though the videotape continued to play for the next hour and 10 minutes, nothing but static was recorded. Were the remaining McPhersons aware, or did they experience a common occurrence in alien abduction, an episode of missing time? For a long time, all I could remember were the lights. Moving toward the lights. It's, it's like, it's a memory, more like a dream. I, Time would just slip away and, and I would wake up on the couch and I couldn't even remember lying down. What's very uh, curious about missing time is that many times the person doesn't realize that he experienced missing time till 20 years later. 20 years later? Are you kidding? Wait a minute. There was that day, July 31st, 1990 between like 4.15 and 5.20 in the afternoon. I can't remember a single thing that happened. Those fucking alien fucks! There's another interesting phenomenon about missing time. When time isn't missing, and it ought to be. Like this scene here. Tommy is running back to the house with his family. Suddenly there's an edit in this video that they supposedly found in the camera in the house. There's an edit where suddenly He's up on the porch ahead of the entire group, but then catches up to him. But for some reason, the clock down in the corner there still shows an entire minute. Check this out. Before the edit, we see the clock in the corner change to 1124 at time code 1636 and 21 frames. After the edit, we see the clock change to 1125 at time code 1637 and 21 frames. There's still a full minute showing there, even though supposedly the camera was turned off, repositioned, and turned back on. Where's the missing time, you bungholes? I'll tell you where it is. That clock was not on the camcorder. It was added later. For example, look here, where the static is coming in. The clock's on top of the static. If that was actual static degrading the image on the tape, the clock should be beneath it. Look, what is... What is it? Oh. What is that? It's burning oh, like hell! Oh, Look, they all have implants. That means that every one of them has been abducted before. They're all tagged. This isn't the first time for any of them. I'm convinced that some Earthlings have had implants uh, put in them. Clearly the aliens have another one of those radical, exciting experiments to perform. Hey, what happens when we make everyone's neck get hot? What are the effects of that on the human animal? I'll tell you what the effect is. It's pissing me off. I'm fascinated by the little girl's behavior. I would have expected her to have been either more withdrawn or more manic. I would have expected that a five-year-old can't act very well, but maybe I'm looking for too elaborate an explanation. She's almost possessed. Possessed? You're a child psychologist and your diagnosis is possessed? Who's this guy's client list? I am Lucifer. The there is no being a only soul. Having already eliminated the actual firearms in the house, the aliens now move to incapacitate the rest of the appliances. The refrigerator, the dishwasher, the stereo, in case those horrible humans try to freeze them or wash them or defeat them with terrible music like in the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Yep. Tune that stereo using the volume knob. I'm sure something will happen. Okay. Are your long distance bills worse than being cored in the anus by extraterrestrials? If so, switch to AT&T now. Help me! You know, it's them. Help me lock the door with Which moves into our oddly prognosticating Blair Witch Project style ending. Thomas McPherson. Uh, we were attacked by aliens. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that noise? Run that back. <laughs> Holy crap. These aren't just any aliens. This is like. This is like. <laughs> Psst. 
Unfortunately, no. Despite the fact that the lightsaber noise continues, we don't see anything so cool as Darth Vader. Just one of these oh, hiding behind a door. Wow, man, check out the spooky felt-covered alien head whose texture you can actually see in this close-up. Were the McPhersons abducted by aliens? I'm pretty sure the McPhersons didn't spell their name with an apostrophe, you fucknut. Could the white light be an alien probe? Digital enhancement shows the object's true three-dimensionality. What the hell is it? What's the wonderful thing about lying? You don't actually have to do anything. You just say you did it. By digital analysis, we mean we ran a black bar over it twice. And by revealed its three-dimensional nature, we mean the picture didn't actually change at all. My take on what the aliens are doing and why they're abducting people, uh, at this point I can only speculate. Uh, they're very interested in our reproductive system. Why? Why are aliens interested in our reproductive system? These are things that supposedly have mastered interstellar travel. Why couldn't they just take one cell from one person, scan it through their supercomputer that's the size of a fingernail, and break down our entire genetic code in a nanosecond and know everything they ever wanted to know? Why is it that aliens always seem to be hung up on things that we're hung up on about ourselves? The newly recovered footage you've been waiting to see. Guard the light! Where's the light? No! Who was that? <sighs> on first viewing this tape, nothing was known about the two minutes and 41 seconds after this event. But when a sharp-eyed assistant editor noticed patterns in the video snow and audio noise, he was intrigued. Recently declassified military technology was used to recover the scrambled video data. Now it sounds very flashy and exciting, but tell me why would the military have classified technology that's designed to clean up tape recordings? What is there about that that they have to hide? Unless the first application of it was demonstrating that those 18 missing minutes from the Watergate tapes actually were Michelle Williams pouring out her love for Dick Nixon. Oh, Jesus. But, whatever the reason, all these secret military technology does is remove the static that these people had themselves added. And frankly, as a bonus scene, this is a total letdown. These people stand around in this room, talking with echoey voices, there's a dead alien on the floor that we can't really see, and eventually they just leave again. Oh, and remember in the teaser at the beginning, how they were planning on doing this special digital enhancement of this alien's face? Yeah, they don't do that. That was another lie. You know, if being dead doesn't stop that alien from escaping the room, I'm pretty sure that, that piece of furniture isn't going to get in his way much either. And look how much luck Mel Gibson had in that crappy movie. You saying M. Night Shyamalan lied to us? Halfway through watching this film for the first time, back in 2000, I had decided to do a video very much like this one, debunking it, showing how ridiculous these effects are, and how obvious it is that this is not what it purported to be. And then I didn't do it. I let it sit for years. Because of this. Because I figured it was unnecessary. Since the film ended with this. A director? A teleplay? Actors? Look, even the two aliens have credits! Surely that alone must have been reason enough for everyone to realize this was not for real. And yet, in the many, many years since I posted a review of this, it has been amongst the most consistently hit pages on the website. Every day, people are still entering keyword searches, McPherson family, Lake County, disappearance, blah blah blah. There is no McPherson family! These aren't these people! These are a bunch of actors. You can look them up on the Internet Movie Database. They've done other parts. And that's what's wrong with the whole alien visitors issue. The entire idea of aliens coming here is so remote and so implausible and would be so amazingly difficult for the rewards involved that it really pales in comparison to the alternate explanation of people lie. Because lying's easy. Like, for example, remember this? Lake County Sheriff's Department. That's not the Lake County Sheriff's Department. That's my mother on the phone. I made it up. Almost any story is almost certainly some kind of lie. 
You see how easy this is? You just get on screen, that, you know what you're doing? It doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter how plausible it is. No one's gonna bother to check the facts because you're positioning yourself as an expert. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Oddly enough, I find it liberating. It lets you cut through the crap. The point being, if you want to fake something, it's not really that hard. In fact, it's almost effortless when you have a public that is so desperate to want to believe. Not to know, but to believe, which just throws the doors wide open for all sorts of scam artists and charlatans. People also want to believe that their own mass media wouldn't blatantly deceive them. No, that's clearly never happened before. We interrupt this program to bring you a news bulletin. Huh? The latest word of the monsters from outer space. Uh, correction, from Mars. TV would have shown us up. Half the population got the screaming jeebies just because they couldn't see how silly it all would have looked. And yet we've seen that Orson was actually wrong about this. Television didn't take the luster and sheen and mystery off of it. It just made it even more accessible to more people. I need you in the shot or people will say they're fake. Well, nobody's gonna think these are fake. And yet sadly we live in a world where people would actually dispute that statement, where people would actually nitpick and complain about the quality of special effects of such amazing detail and accomplishment as this and yet will still allow themselves to be snowed by this garbage is. of this quality. <laughs> what possible reason? They simply need to think that it's real. It ties back into our ancient fear of predators. We don't really have them anymore, but we still imagine we see them everywhere. Things that ghosts used to do, aliens do now. Poltergeist attack or alien attack? It's kind of hard to tell the difference. They seem to be on about the same kinds of things. A lingering symptom of the time when our survival depended on being able to pick out threats hiding in the shadows. So are there aliens out there? There's no way of knowing, really. We may never know. If there are aliens, they're probably sitting around on their own planet staring back this way wondering if there's any intelligent life out here. I sometimes wonder much the same thing myself. And frankly, finding out that aliens existed would be really cool. But any alien smart enough to get here in the first place would be too smart to be doing all of the completely stupid nonsense we constantly attribute to them. If we're going to accept something so extraordinary, we need some evidence that's a bit more extraordinary. Or at the very least, better than the garbage that they're handing over to us now. My friends, you have seen this incident based on sworn testimony. Can you prove it didn't happen? Yes, you can! As can anyone with the slightest shred of common sense. People once laughed at the round earth, the heliocentric solar system, germ transmission, mental illness, the obsolescence of VHS, and even jokes. And now, people laugh at common sense. God help us in the future. More than 50 people saw the UFO. More than 50 people saw the UFO.